Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to take a look and see how we calculate the intensity in general along anywhere along the diffraction pattern. So for example, we know that at the central maximum, at the very center here, the intensity is equal to I sub naught, and I sub naught can be calculated as a function of the, electro, the electromagnetic field oscillation magnitude. But what is the intensity away from the central maximum, anywhere along the central maximum, or anywhere along the site maxima? Well, for that, we need to find an equation that describes it in general. We already know the electric field intensity as a function of the electric field intensity at the very central maximum right here, times the ratio of the sine of the phase angle divided by 2, divided by the phase angle divided by 2. And since we know that the intensity is a function of the intensity at the central maximum times the ratio of the electric field oscillation squared divided by the total electric field oscillation squared when there's no phase difference, we can then go ahead and calculate that by plugging this, this in here for this. Remember, when we take E sub total divided by E sub naught, we get what's inside the parentheses. So therefore, we know that the intensity anywhere can be written as I sub naught times the quantity of the sine of the phase angle divided by 2 divided by the phase angle divided by 2 quantity squared. So this now becomes the equation we're going to use to find the intensity anywhere along our diffraction pattern. Now also realizing that the extra distance travel between the left side of the beam or the top of the beam or compared to the bottom of the beam is equal to the slit width times the sine of theta, theta being the lookup angle. And of course, we also know that the sine is a very small, uh, the angle is a very small quantity, so this can be written as a times the tangent of theta. And by definition, the tangent of theta is, is uh, opposite over adjacent, so we can say that the extra distance traveled between the top and the bottom part of the beam is equal to a times the opposite side, that would be y, divided by the adjacent side, which would be l, the distance to the screen from the slit, and y is the distance from the center maximum to the point of interest. In this case, that would be this y right there. All right, so now we realize that there is a relationship between the extra distance traveled, the lookup angle, the distance to the point of interest, and the phase angle phi, because we know that the phase angle can be written as the extra distance traveled divided by the wavelength, that ratio, times 360 degrees or 2 pi. We can use 2 pi for radians or 360 degrees in degrees. Notice that this is simply a ratio of how much extra distance traveled divided by the wavelength. If, of, if of course, the extra distance traveled less than the wavelength, it would be a fraction of a wavelength. If it's greater than a wavelength, it would be, of course, one times or more than one times the size of a wavelength. Now, Notice the relationship. We can write extra distance in terms of a sine theta. So we can write that the phase angle phi is equal to a sine theta divided by lambda. And again, this will be a fraction of the wavelength times 360 degrees. And then we can take that value and plug it in here to find the intensity. Or sometimes, if we're not given the phase, if we're not given the lookup angle, but we're given y and l, we can say, okay, we can write this as this is equal to a times the sine of theta can be written as a tangent of theta or can be written as y over l. So this can be written as a y over l times lambda. And again, that would be a fraction of the wavelength times 360 degrees. So if we're given y and l, we can do it like this. If we're given theta, the lookup angle, we can calculate phi like that. And once we know what phi is, we can simply plug it in here and find the intensity. So to get a better feel for it, let's try a few examples. Let's try some numbers. Let's say that the phase difference is equal to, let's start with pi divided by 6, which is equal to 30 degrees. Let's the a phase angle equal to, how about pi divided by 4, which is 45 degrees. And let's try the phase angle is equal to pi over 2, which is equal to 90 degrees. Let's find the intensity in each of those cases and see what we get. All right, I'll need a calculator. Uh, but let's start with the first one. In this case, we can say that the intensity is equal to the intensity of the central maximum times the sine of, notice we have 30 degrees divided by 2, so 30 degrees divided by 2, divided by, now this of course will have to be put into radians, because we can't divide by degrees, we have to divide by radians, so we have to take pi divided by 6 and divide by 2, so we'll just write it like this, 
and the whole thing squared. All right. So we take 15, the sine of 15, times 12, divided by pi, and we square that number, and we get, in this case, this will be equal to I sub naught times 0 0.977. So 97.7% of the maximum at the very center, which means we're not very far away from the immediate middle of the central maximum. But there it gives you an example. If the phase angle is 30 degrees, then the intensity would be equal to that. All right. What about if the phase angle is 45 degrees? Well, then we could say that I is equal to I sub naught times the sine of 45 degrees divided by 2 divided by, of course, the bottom we have to write in radians, so it would be pi over 4 divided by 2, or that would be pi divided by 8, and the whole thing squared. All right, so we get 22.5, take the sine of that, times 8 divided by pi, and we square that, and we get 0.95. So it would be I is equal to 0 0.95 I sub naught. Okay, so you see that now that's a little bit less than what we had at 30 degrees. We'll do it one more time at 90 degrees and see what we get. So at 90 degrees, we get I is equal to I sub naught times the sine of 90 degrees divided by 2 divided by, and again, the, the denominator I have to put in terms of radians. That would be pi divided by 2 divided by 2 the whole thing squared. Okay, so I get 45 degrees, take the sine of that, then multiply it times 4, divide by pi, and square that number, and I get 0 0.81. So I is equal to 0 0.81 I sub naught. As you can see that we can find the intensity anywhere along that pattern by simply finding the phase angle, plugging the phase angle into this equation, and out pops the intensity at that particular location. So that's a very handy equation to have, and it doesn't matter how big the phase angle is, the phase angle can be 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, and we can, we're going to find the intensity anywhere along that diffraction pattern. So one more equation that we should put in here, and I think I need a little bit more room. Let me include it here. Okay. So we can say that I is equal to I sub naught times this quantity, the sine of phi over 2, divided by phi divided by 2 quantity squared, which is basically simply the derivative of that equation right there. So now you have the tools to calculate the intensity anywhere along the diffraction pattern simply by using this equation right here and by knowing the phase difference between the top of the beam and the bottom of the beam. Of course, if you don't know the phase difference, but you know either the lookup angle or you know the position of interest, you can then calculate the phase angle using this equation right here. And that's how we do that.